<laughs> Hi there. <laughs> that voice you hear? <laughs> a lady called Mama Duck. How are you? I'm well. How's yourself? Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> well, that was a good start, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Sure, what time is it now? It's um, 20... Sorry, it's 30... No, actually, sorry. It's 21 minutes. <laughs> six. Can you believe it? It's nearly six o'clock. Well, yes, it is actually now, which means, guess what's around the corner? What's around the corner? The Angelus. That's, oh. that's one minute of pure joy. There you go, actually. Yes, there you go. If we keep speaking for at least 20 minutes, we will hear the Angelus tolling in our beautiful little village town out here on the west coast of Ireland. Definitely, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking for more than 20 minutes, says me, to you. Oh, there you go. So how has life been anyways for the last, um, I think the last time we did a podcast was... 2020. 2020. <laughs> no, 20, no, 2021. 2021, all right. I th- you know what? I think I think our last podcast was Valentine's Day-ish. Right. 2021, so there you go. So this is a, a, a reunion of sorts, Mr. Colton. Well, it's great to hang out with you again and at the crack with you. But I will say this, right? Mm -hmm. I've been working on my voice. Have you? Yeah, I've been doing these PowerPoint presentations just to myself in the house. (laughs) And apparently I say a lot of words like, because, I also say, mmm, and I also say things like, really. Really? Yes. (laughs) I'm trying to stop doing all that stuff. So the computer, it puts manners on you. Does it? It's like you're saying this too many times or it'll say to you, you're speaking too fast. Or sometimes you will get the report at the end of the speech and it says to you, here's your report. And normally some some of the things are good, but then one or two things are like, your pitch needs to change. Ah, yes. I don't don't think it's a bit too, you know, Skynet, a bit too much the open the pod bay doors house. You don't think the machines are taking over when they're starting to I do, I do. You're becoming too formulaic. Yes. But then at the same time, you you also repeat words because that's just what you have in your mind. Well, it's true. And I have, I, I have several phrases which I find myself repeating. Yeah, me too. Exactly. I do, which, so I do believe in dictions. This is just, I think it's just the, the fact that the, the computer dictating to me, my things is a bit scary. It's all a bit, well, the, the, I'm not sure I'm ready for the machine age in this postmodern modern. Well, I think we're the gateway to the machine age because if, as uh, as John was saying earlier on, mm-hmm. how is Jan? Hey, John. We're carrying the cameras around with us all the time. Like the, the if you look at the phone now, it's got two cameras in the back, one in the front there, and it's following you around and you're talking all the time. And it's it's actually, I remember before I was talking to this this lady from years and years ago. And she said she worked for a company that basically designed ads around, it was basically like an online language she was saying. She was programming the computer so that they could create this online language that would understand if you keep repeating a word, then they would put some sort of like the internet would help you, Mm -hmm. you know, get into that word a bit more. It's like when you go onto Google now and you type in a few different words, it'll finish the sentence for you. Yeah. So then you're like, oh Jesus, fair play to you Google. You knew what I was thinking. So yes. she was helping to kind of work that uh, software. And at the time I was like, that was that was cool. But the more I see it now, the more I'm like, maybe that's like the computer's trying too much to right. guess what you're thinking to the point where you're letting the computer think for you. Pretty much. And, you know, they discovered real AI with identity just a couple of weeks ago. And they have, and they don't know what to do with it. Google found AI and they're just ignoring it. I saw an interview with a scientist and wow. was like, so did you ever see that film Electric Dreams? Hold me, moles. No. I was like, I think it was about 984, 985. It was about, like, you know, a, a computer, someone spills coffee on it, becomes sentient. No. Oh. And it forms a relationship with its, with its owner. And uh, yeah, it's it was like always that like movie. dreadfully sort of sad. Or, um, or is it... That South African film, Chappie, have you seen that? Where it's like an AI robot. No, Chappie, some, haven't. Yeah. So it was made by the guy that made like Area 15, the South African director. The name of whom escapes me at this moment. Chappie, yes. I'm going to write that down because I, I know I'm going to forget that. So, yes. And I know this is this is the worst thing actually because this 
is a part of the problem. I've after taken out my phone. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm still working on my voice here. I see. Yeah, so if, if I sound different, I apologize. I think you've got a terribly... Oh, I can think of that Father Ted thing. Is just like... But let me just say that because I wanted to make sure I take this point. Yes. I'm putting this... The name... Uh, what's it called? The South African thing? Chappie. Chappie. I'm putting Chappie into the phone because my memory is so bad that I rely on the phone now to remember <laughs> things for me. And I just put in the word Chappie and it said, do you want to say crappy? <laughs> I just sort of appreciate the irony of, of speaking about AI while you're putting that search into into Google on the iPhone. And the worst thing is we're actually recording this onto Audacity. We are, on Audacity. Which is an audacious thing. If we have the Audacity to record on Audacity and we're on a MacBook, so we are slaves. We're to part the, of the problem. We're, we're, well, we're all part of the system, aren't we? But we really are, yeah. But it seems like everything is leading into the one path. It's almost like a labyrinth. And this morning... I um my phone wasn't working. Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning and my phone wasn't working and it wouldn't charge me and I was panicked. And I started thinking about all the people that I've left on there and I was like, Oh my god, I'm never gonna hear from this guy again, I'm never gonna hear from this lady again, I'm never gonna hear from this guy again. I need to get back to these messages and then I went on to I went on to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I sent you a message, I was like, The phone's gone. <laughs> yes. And uh, I remember, like, I, I sent a, like just a, I sent an email to a friend. <laughs> it's so dramatic. I was like, "The phone is no more. If you want to ever talk to me again, you get me on email." <laughs> and then I went out to cut the lawn. I was walking around, going, "Who are the closest people to me?" <laughs> <laughs> but um, the phone is back working, anyways. Now, but I was relieved to see the phone back working. But at the same time, I was kind of annoyed. It's like having a little prick of a child. Yes. That you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to give you a life. I just need, I just drop you off at daycare, just so I can go and have like a bit of a day spa, and then I I'll just be, want a couple of minutes to myself. Exactly, and I'll feel, I'll feel pleased when I come to yeah. pick you up at the end of the day. Exactly. We all need to put it in the aside for a while. I said to a friend the other day, he said, I said, where do you go on holiday? And he says, I go to Alicante. And I'm like, what do you do in Alicante when you're there? And he said. I just walk. He said, I put the phone in the hotel safe and I just walk. And I thought, that sounds like a great holiday. Just because he's always he he's always on his phone because all of the work, you know, now we rely on our phone for work all the time. So there's emails and messages. Yeah, but it's almost like, it's almost like Houdini when he gets thrown into, I think it was the water he gets thrown into. Yes. They have his hands tied, but then when he gets the hands loose, the, the, he's still cuffed together. And this is a terrible analogy and I was never good at analogies <laughs> But I will say this, um, mm -hmm. the thing about the phone now is the way they have it done is that, yes, you can go off the phone. You don't need to be on the phone as much, you don't need to be on the phone as much as you're on it. Anyone doesn't need to be on the phone as much as they're on it. But at the same time, they have all the work sort of generated towards the phone. Well, a lot of the work now, you know, mm -hmm. they want to make it virtual. So maybe I'm wrong on that, actually. I don't quite know. That, that's kind of like a guess. But what I'm trying to say is that mm -hmm. you lose out in work if you don't if you're not on the phone too much you do. because you know you need to have these connections all the time you need to be able to talk to people quickly get back to emails quickly and really we're not really on our laptops as much as we used to be now no. it's all about the phone it is about the time. phone is like they've got it to nearly a perfect size where it's like okay this is this is what you have all the time with you be sure it's always charged everyone that you know will contact you probably first on the phone they'll send you a text message or a whatsapp Yep. Or in, uh, what's the other one called? Um, Snapchat. No, not Snapchat. No, it's like a, a, a Telegram. Oh, yeah. That's where all the bad stuff goes on. And the yeah. good stuff. Oh. A lot of, uh, lot of truth been spoken on there. Oh, I don't, I don't, I haven't gone down the, down the tap, dark road of Telegram. Well, but Telegram not, is fine. You, like, it's not like the dark web. It's not. No, um, it, it is what you, what you use it for, I guess. But I mean. I don't yeah. think it's, I think Instagram. Well, they're obviously going back to Facebook with their aunt. They're they're like, this is what we found. Yeah, and, what we, and Mark Zuckerberg is on top of a big chair. He goes, right, kill them. Oh my god! We see everything is there's an app for everything now. So much so that I took a summer job as a tour director this summer, and there's literally it's all run by an app. Like so, I had mm. my phone with me the whole time, and the okay. phone the phone is telling me. We, what the, my itinerary is and how many people I've got with me and how many people have signed up for the excursions and, you know, what the, what the menu is and that sort of thing. So literally, if I'd lost my phone at any point during that journey, 
and I didn't have like a hard copy, I would have been absolutely screwed. But it's just like yeah. you're literally walking around just dependent on this little machine. That's and of it course to see, yeah. and of course it is um and half the time if you're lost you're using the Google Maps to find your way around. So everyone you know, like my Google fr- footprint is like very massive. Anyone can track me any time because I'm literally tied to my little machine yeah. in my hand, saying where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm That's with. That's the worst. The worst thing I'm about spending. the whole situation is that you're kind. Of, we're we're all kind of giving away the. Um, we're like, you know, like you go somewhere and you don't know which direction you're going, so you take out your phone and it tells you exactly where to go. It tells you how yeah. to get the bus. So use your location. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes it gets annoyed at you, like, oh, you do you really want to turn off your location? Yes, yes. I do. I don't I, want you knowing where I'm going, even though I kind of know you're watching me anyways. Exactly. It's kind of like having someone creepy in the bushes watching you. And then they're like, oh, you, you mean you say you don't want me to follow you? Exactly. No, I'm just trying to chill out tonight. Well, I I turned off my Google location for ages because I was sick of, like, because I was always putting, like, Google reviews and, and things. Because when I first got to Ireland, it was such a novelty. Every time I went to somewhere, you know, somewhere scenic, I'd, like, tag it or I'd write a review of every hotel. Mm-hmm. And I, I rarely write bad ones. It's only if, like, if people are lovely, I'd, I'd, write a, I'd do them a favour of writing a lovely review. But then every time I drove from here to, like, Bell Mallet, every time I pulled up a, up a service station, Google would, like, interrupt my playlist to ask me if I wanted to write a review. You know, I what know. did I think of my what? visit to the service station? I'm like... And it was like, and literally, Google's so invasive. If you notice, if you're listening to like music on YouTube or whatever, a Google notification will come in and it'll completely knock off, you off the internet. You have to turn everything on and off yeah. again yeah, and yeah. restart. And it was like, you just like. It's like just like trying to superimpose itself into your life, kind of. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, wait a minute, sorry, stop that song that you were playing there, that the one that you're really get, getting into and you're kind of relaxing about life. Do you mind telling me how you felt about the last place you're in? Exactly, is there public wanna, toilets in yeah. that service station? I'm just like, I just want. But to is it working music. its way towards a system that could be like this company is not getting enough five stars, therefore they can't stay open. So it's kind of like a social. I don't want to say it like because I know it's a bit, it's a bit of a dodgy thing to say. But is it is it a, is it going towards a situation where it's all built on reviews and? Everyone has a bit of a like a too much of democracy gone mad, but in a point system. Because yeah, it's like you kind of get a point system, and then people are like, "Well, you don't have enough points to get in here. Sorry about that." Now exactly. you're gonna have to turn around, uh, but maybe it's not like that. I think I think Seth MacFarlane actually did like a whole episode of his um, sci-fi series on that. I think. From I memory. didn't know he had one. Um, what's it called? Oh my goodness! I want to say Alfred. It's not. It's it's sort of like a Star Trekky thing. But it's the name of his okay. name of his spaceship. Your man from it's like Wilbur. Go. I think it might be called Wilbur or something like that. It sounds like you're saying Bill Burr, but like you're Bill, kind of pronouncing. No, not not Bill Burr, Wilbur or something like that. You'll have to. It's Seth MacFarlane. It's a space Odyssey. farce, space exploration farce sort of thing. But um, but yeah, I think from memory, I think it's the they land and there's a, a planet where everything is just like. Yeah, you know, it's like if you get the wrong sort of points or reviews on social media, they send around the, the hit squad. Like everything goes mad, you get persecuted. And that is where it's going because you get this, like these mad. I mean, I operated B&B for a while and you'd like work your ass off to get the ratings up and then someone would come along and have a bad day and write you a bad review, whether it was for any relation to the truth of their experience or not. And your ratings would plummet and then people would copycat their reviews, even like, because they're so, people are so suggestible, like, if I hear something, right, like, someone said, <laughs> someone said there was a smell in the room, <laughs> and then people were complaining about the same smell, but they weren't in the same room, they weren't even in the same room, Okay. and there were other people who would like, who were writing like, wildly different reviews for the same room on the same weekend, and you think, this is like, this is crap, it's just like people... I think the internet's still going through its Wild West moment where like nobody knows what's going on in there and it's still fairly messy and anyone can do anything and say anything and then it's it's getting more regulated as time goes on but then they'll move on to something else, we all, we all will because it'll be too too controlling, there's always like a, there's always a darker area to be hanging out. Well you see, there is such a thing as mass hysteria and it's like people just, mm. when you think about it... Ma- how do you mean mass hysteria? Well, trends, like things become cool, then they become trends, then they become cults, and people yeah. just get whole swept up into mass hysteria. Yeah. Depending but we all do, depend, I suppose. But it's all like limited. I mean, we've all queued up for Taylor Swift uh, tickets. Well, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, one minute, the band of the moment, or even in the 1960s, there was like 
sort of a Baptist revivalist sort of televangelist that like visited Australia and half of Perth showed up to be like blessed with it by this evangelist and there's like it was just a a, a wild moment in history because no one continued with it once he left the country. He was just like a celebrity televangelist. It wasn't perpetuated at all. Celebrity televangelist. Yeah, it was just like you know, like a Jimmy ba Backer or a Jimmy Baker or some. Maybe he was. Maybe people went to see him because he was a celebrity. Well, that's what I mean. They went to see a celebrity, and then and then they all did, got converted. But they got converted for a hot minute. And but you know, it's, it's kind of like when you go to um, when you go to like a concert, you know, and you listen to the music, and you're like, it could be country and western, or it could be something that you wouldn't necessarily normally go to. And then after you're leaving, you're like, Jesus, I think I'm going to listen to that music a lot more. Yeah. And you kind of like, you feel like you're converted. Exactly. Maybe it's a bit like that, no? You, maybe. You know what I'm looking forward to in September? This concert, which I find the most... Warren, uh, no, sorry, uh, your man coming home. What's the name again? Gath I'll be Brooks. gone till November. I'll be gone till November. <laughs> Whitecliffe John? No. He's not coming back yet, no? Um, I don't know about him. You but tell I my actually... mother I began till November, <laughs> January, February, March, April, May. I give a kiss to my mother. No, this one is Snoop Dogg. Oh, no way. 17th of September. But so you could go and see him in Dublin at like three arena with like three and a half thousand other people. Or if you go and see him in Kerry at the Glen Eagles. Can you imagine Snoop Dogg and Kerry? I can't. I actually can't, but I would love to see it. It's almost this is like, what I mean. This is like it's that. almost like an eagle coming in. It's like there's an eagle going to be landing in from Canada one of the days, and this eagle is this just, the wingspan on this eagle is amazing. But he's going to come in anyways for a few days, and he's going to lay a few eggs, and we can all look at the eggs. And uh, are just going to revel in the, eggs, in, like, in the majesty of this yeah. exotic, exotic thing. I used to listen to him go with the go with his. Ain't nothing but a cheap thing, baby. But, um... I lo you see, I love Snoop Dogg. And I can't wait. But to see him in Kerry, it's just yeah, like, yeah. is there anything less Snoop Dogg than Kerry, really? I just can't. I in can't. It's Kerry, so, they, they, it blows my mind. So I just, I have to go just for the crack light, just to see what this is going to look like. A Snoop Dogg gig in Kerry. This is... Kerry is, is a great mad. spot. I've, I've had so many good times in Kerry. Kerry's amazing. I think it's fucking... It's, Sorry, excuse me. I think it's one of the nicest places in the world. It's beautiful. And I noticed a long time ago that you hardly ever see Kerry people outside of Kerry because it's so beautiful they don't bloody Well, leave. if you go to Dublin, you'll see a few, like, headers knocking around the town. <laughs> like, you, you just, you'll see them because they'll be kind of a bit wild and you won't be able to recognise them. But then if you just if you just imagine them when they're owl lads okay. and then you picture an owl lad from Kerry. And I've met a few. I met this one lad before years ago who was at the... Kilorglin, uh, goat festival. <laughs> yes. And goes, the name is Porridge. The, the Puck Festival. The Puck Festival. No, it's just the one, the goat, where I think years and years ago there was a goat that... Uh, and and they, they, king, they make it king. Yeah, well, they bring the goat into the town, but the reason why, because I think the goat came over a mountain years ago, as the story goes, and like told the local people that there was English people or some, some people coming. Okay. So the goat like told the community first what was happening. So then they all, you know, they got their shit together, like, fuck, get the guns, get everything ready, you know. Okay. So, like, they were, they, I was going to say they worshipped the goat, but no, they honoured the goat because of that reason. But now what they do is, the last time I seen it anyways, they come into town, the whole streets are full of people dancing and singing, playing music, and then they bring a goat into the town around 7 or 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And he's at the top of the, he's like at the top of this massive truck. And he's just on the top. And you're like, oh, please, please don't kill him. <laughs> But then, like, as time passes on, you're like, oh, no, it's grand. The goat, the goat just heads off then towards the end, and he's like, he's really enjoying it, I think. But anyway, <laughs> last time I was there, I, I met this fella called Porridge. And he goes, I had, a, I had about nine pints today. No, how do you talk? He goes, I had nine pints today, and, you know, I had a couple of last nights as well. After I woke up this morning, I wasn't feeling too bad, and I went out with a cup of cattle. And he, like, I'm not just doing, like, a middle character. That's kind of how he was talking <laughs> He was like fucking such crack and the way he was talking about the pints and I was out the night before as well but I, I only had maybe four or five pints and I got up that morning let's say at seven half seven and I was a bit tired and he was like yeah I'm sure you'll be tired enough when you're gone <laughs> and I was like oh right and he goes yeah I should be long enough lying down in the future like, you know? and he, was, he kept saying these perlers and I was like oh yeah yeah and then I was like sure I'll have a pint and we had a few pints together 
and he was basically doing like a historical tour of uh, Clorglin. And I don't remember any of it. <laughs> but I remember going, that man's a lovely man. But it's a great town to go to. But Kerry itself, Ring of Kerry, um, I don't know too much about Tralee. Or Kinsale, I think, is another spot. Oh, Kinsale's in Cork. Kin- sorry, it is in Cork, yeah, yeah, so, you're right. So I was in Kinsale. Sorry, Just sorry, Cork people, by the way, because I mean, I don't want <laughs> anyone going, what the fuck are you saying, boy? <laughs> oh, it's not, there's a thing about Robert Cork, Bandits. Cork, Cork. Robert Bandit's got to Limerick, because it's like, this oh, is yeah. Limerick, and if you don't like it, you can fuck off to Cork. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was in Kinsale this time last week. I slept in my hippie van overnight in Cove, and I woke up to the beautiful harbour. And I had a had a, a pint of Murphy's Stout down in Cove, and I had a look at. I love telling people like who like like the Titanic. I was like, guess where the last place mm. the Titanic stopped? Guess, and they're like, uh, was it England? No, <laughs> it was <laughs> not England. It was fucking Cork. Took on a load of people, yes. The boat did sink. And a couple of people got off. Oh, they did, yeah. They were they were popping into, I think it was uh, Jobstown for a couple of yeah. and, BLTs. And a, uh, two local lads got off, and so they didn't go on. Or they'd lost their tickets or something. Yeah. And so when the Titanic sank... And that sank, became actually... That's actually Mar- Michal Martin. <laughs> He became the leader of Ireland. The leader of the The leader people. of Ireland. But when the Titanic sank, taking 1,200 souls with it, yeah, the local newspaper said, two local boys have lucky escaped. <laughs> two local... Jesus Christ. I mean, at least <laughs> they, they put the spin on. They saw they the bright put, side. They, saw they the were bright putting side. a positive spin on it. Like, they so you, sure you, were. You can't argue with that, you yeah, know? No, you can't. It's terribly, terribly Irish. It's just like... Yeah. Yeah. That quote from Yates, like, fortunately, he had the Irish disposition which sustained him through temporary periods of joy. <laughs> great for remembering quotes. Mm. I, I'm just so bad when it comes to uh, remembering anything, really. I don't know if that was because of the phone or before the phone, but you have, you've got some great, great quotes. Say that one again. Um, fortunately, he had the Irish disposition which sustained him through temporary periods of joy. <laughs> Suffice to say... Mm. He couldn't enjoy himself too much. Is that what that means? <laughs> well, it's it's irony is to say that like the stoicism of the Irish people who lead a very bleak existence. No, that's not true at all. We don't need a bleak ex- existence. We yeah. lead, we lead a, a well, beautiful the, existence. Well, 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 you do, despite everything that's happening to you. Yeah, but like everyone in the world, <laughs> everyone in the world is suffering in different ways. Well, yes, I, I'm not, not. The, I'm just saying that, like, the eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. The, now, see, the whole the thing comes down to the day. Yeah. is is fucking fabulous. I'm completely come around to your way of life. <laughs> well, like every every place in the world has its different things that are going on, you know. And Ireland has over the years many many is a thing that was going on. Oh, many, many, many of the things. Yeah, but like, no, I suppose the same as Australia, like, or the same as, like, you can't say one country has had more things going on than another place because really, like, we're not, all, we're well, all not kinda, at this point. No, there's, no. there's not a place that one of that one race hasn't been in another race. Exactly, yeah. So, like, you know, Ireland itself, there's a lot of, like, lovely things going on here. And you're being blessed by the Angelus as we speak. The Angelus, like, that's a good, that's a good two minutes a day where you get to, like, just really think about your problems. There you go. And say, like, you know what? What am I doing? That didn't pick up on the microphone, that bell. Uh, or maybe that's a bell. It's like a tiny, tiny little bell. <laughs> that, of course, was the bell for 6 p.m. 6, 6 p.m. mass. So it's just like, I'm just thinking, oh, we are currently in a house that's about 100 years old, so there would have been many... Many people kneeling down in the front room listening to that about six o'clock. You, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I remember one time when I was younger, and I vaguely remember the whole story, but I had like um, an uncle, a few uncles, and a few like aunties that, were, that came to the house, and we were doing an Angelus, and we were kneeling down in the living room. But I was so young, I didn't really know the pattern of what was going on. Mm-hmm. So they were like, fucking kneel down, kneel down. I was kneeling down, I was like, hey, I was like, Scottish, I'm Scottish, I'm Tabar as well. Stand up, I was like, stand up, stand up, 
I had a lump behind me. Shut up, shut up. He was kind of like, he was like those lads that you see with the little stick. <laughs> and they're like doing the opera. But you know, they're not really doing anything. They're just pretending to be there. How oh, they cannot do this. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so my uncle was a bit like that. So he was like, <laughs> putting, he was putting the hand on me. No, he wasn't. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying this. But it was like, basically, we were just like saying prayers. We were saying the, um, saying a rosary, actually, I think it was. Which was like, something like 30 Hail Marys. See, but I, that was like what everyone did. See, because I was I'm not raised in the faith, as it were. When I first got to Ireland, they'd see signs by the road saying like, um, they, you know, this month they're going to do like a novena for for so and so. I'd have to go and I literally would have to go and Google exactly what the definition of a novena was. Novena, novena is like um, if you ever ever been like into, we'll say, a sports day. <laughs> Not where I thought you were going to go. Yeah. But like there's those like kids running around, they're doing like different sports. Yeah. But there's the part of it where it's like um, you might play a bit of GAA or you might play a bit of soccer ball. Uh-huh. And um, basically like you play loads of teams and it's like it, it goes down to like a blitz where it's like you're playing three or four times a day and your legs are bollocks. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like what mass is like for Novena. <laughs> You go to knock the novena, and actually I was there once, and Mother Teresa turned up. This is the truth. Mother Teresa turned up, and it, actually my sister fainted. I was like, I didn't even know she was religious. And she goes, "No, it's the heat because it was packed." We were like sardines, and my sister had to be airlifted. I maybe airlifted or carried out. I forget. And we went back to the car. This is, this is the truth. My parents, I could see them sweating buckets, but they're like. We're sticking around. We mightn't see this again. <laughs> Mother Teresa up there, and she was like on a like a third story building with a massive pane of glass looking out, just waving at lads. Oh my god! She's just waving at randomers, and everyone's like, "That's about me." <laughs> but to know, in fairness, it was um, it was a very very nice day, and that was part of Novena. And I was like, oh. I know I'm saying that now, but at the same time, it's a great memory of mine. I loved I loved to be there, like, cause the whole family went. And you'd be meeting people. It was like a festival. Yes. Festival of God. Yes. Or it's not my way of trying to convert you, by the way. No. It, it, but I'm just saying like that. It was. It was. It was great times. It may some people say illustrate the meaning of mass hysteria that I was talking about earlier. <laughs> but no, I. But like, like if it. mass hysteria is an energy, then surely that's enough. Well, you know, but. You know, um, the Fenian was that, you know how like the Pope, John Paul II, popped by... Jeanne <laughs> Popped by Phoenix Park in 1979. Yeah, he was going dogging, no? Well, that's what most people go to He Phoenix popped in Park in the starlet. <laughs> <laughs> Late at night he goes, no, no, I'm not the Pope at all. But uh, those public toilets are notorious for the cottaging, apparently you tap your foot under the cubicle well, door. I have a story about you about the toilets, by the way. A story oh, for you about okay. the toilets in Phoenix Park. I don't know. Should I say it now, or like, should I disrupt what you were saying there? No, I think I think I think I think we need to hear the the story about the this. Public this this is something that I'm not proud of. Oh my goodness gracious! Right, so okay, so you imagine, buckle in. Imagine Phoenix Park like it's a big place. Yeah. And sometimes you see the deer is there, and sometimes you see families going for walks. Like, oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I was there one time, anyways. I just parked up, but I was there on my own. So I was like, <laughs> what am I doing in the park on my own? I felt like I felt like a bit like was it? It was time? weird. Hmm? Daytime or night? It was daytime. daytime. Right. But like there was like lads running and they were like, everyone seemed to be having a reason to be in the park. Mm-hmm. But I was just there because I just wanted to just park the car up and just be out like for a walk. So anyways, I remember going into the shop in the middle of um, Phoenix Park and I was like, got a coffee. I was queuing up for ages, got a coffee for something like fucking 3.50. And I was like, Jesus. What well, kind of was more coffee in it for that place? <laughs> but anyways, um, I had the coffee anyway, and I was walking around and I could hear the fucking tigers and elephants from the zoo. And half of me was kind of like, I'd love to go in there. The other half was like, ah, that's a bit unfair, you know. <laughs> they're locked up, they're prison prison tigers and all that stuff. They, they do have a good breeding um, program for the lions. Apparently, apparently they've a good set up there in Dublin Zoo, yeah, it's, it's good for them. But um, I don't know that. But um, So when I was drinking my coffee and I was walking around, I was like, actually, better go back to the Jacks now. <laughs> so I went back to the Jacks anyways. There's two toilets there, but... One of them, like, both of them looked like they were closed. 
I couldn't get into either of them. I needed to go to the bathroom badly. So I pulled on one of them. The door opened. There was a lad in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> And he was like, he was like, there was the, the sink first. And then there was the toilet. He was inside the toilet. So I didn't yeah. see what he was doing. But for some reason, the main door was closed. So anyways, I need to go in badly. He came out anyways. He's like, oh yeah, I'm done. But anyways, as before I had walked in, there was a girl behind me. Like a girl about my age. She looked like she was kind of, she kind of looked like she kind of, I felt like she was kind of, it was like a random thing where like, we're, we're about the same age in life. You know, yeah. we, we both don't really know what's going on, but it was kind of like, yeah, you're hanging around feeling, you know, it was nothing else more than that. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> there was another bathroom that I thought people were going, going in and out of. So I, I went into the bathroom anyways after this guy. Mm-hmm. He went out, washed his hands, left. And I went to the toilet and I was like, just chilling out. I was like, okay, I'm just going to relax here now because yeah. there's another bathroom. I need to go for number two. The other bathroom is just like for quick ones, you know. Yeah. In and out, yeah. Yeah. And um, I was you, in there for you, about... You've settled in. Okay, I've settled in. I'm probably dragging the story on a bit, but... No, no, no. I was in there for like probably far too long. All right. Then I came out and then the girl was there. Still <laughs> queuing up for the toilet. Mm-hmm. And I've been in there for like maybe 25 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, how are you getting out? <laughs> I, I was like, fuck, I can never see that person again, ever. If I see her again, I'm in big trouble. Because that story, she's like, this is the lad that took 25 minutes when I also needed to go for a shit. <laughs> and like, I kind of felt guilty for a while because I was like, yeah, she was probably was like under a lot of pressure there for a bit. But then I was like, you know what? Get her shit together too, you know? If you're really relying on me for your toilet break, then you're in trouble already. And uh, I kind of, I, I, I think I might have seen her on the park later on. <laughs> like she was there with the family and I was like, well, if she wants to throw shade towards me, I'll tell the whole family about what happened. I'll fill them in on, on the backstory. <laughs> I'm hanging, who hangs around for 25 minutes listening to a man have a shit? <laughs> That's exactly, that was going to be my first statement towards the family. I was like, you need your daughter checked out. Because I just, like, yeah, I, I could have said to them, yeah, I got lazy. <laughs> Hung around for too long. I probably should have had more on the agenda for the day. <laughs> but your daughter, God knows how long she was in there. I mean, she could have fucking held up a whole family. You were dying for a shite. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Suffice to say, that's a bit of shite talk. But uh, oh. that, that actually genuinely did happen. That's the worst thing about that situation. Now, I probably haven't described her properly, but she was queuing up and, like, she did kind of look at me as I was leaving going, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, well, I'd rather have had actually gone to the toilet, inside the toilet, than try to appease one person and <laughs> yes. not finish off my business. But anyway. Well, you know, a man is entitled to his privacy at this time of his day. I think so, you yeah. know. But, like, it's going to court next week. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to talk to Judge Judy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez. But anyways, how was life with you? Life with me. It has been It has been bizarre. Really? It has been bizarre. Because, as I said, I took a summer job, which was basically a tour director going around Ireland and England mm-hmm. with a load of Americans. Okay. And... Some of whom were lovely and some of whom were less than lovely. But it did give me loads and loads of comedic material. So next time I take to the stage and stand up, I will have loads to say about my my lovely fellow companions on, on tours around England and Ireland with Americans. That when is your next gig? My next gig is Thursday, actually, mm. at the Roisin Dove in Galway. Oh, nice. Yes. So it's been, and it's been like, the last time I was at the Roisin Dove, it was February 2020. So just before everything stopped being mm-hmm. stopped being Galway. So it'd be, so it's been a wild three years ish. Yeah. So everything stopped in Galway. What do you mean? Well, because COVID happened. Mm. Like a month of life. You know, I was I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gigging at the Roisin Dove, and like I can't believe it. Like I'm made it in Irish comedy, and then. Every pub and club shut down for two years. Yeah. So like, so starting from scratch again. So I'm very glad to be back at the Russian Dove in August. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, most people are at the Edinburgh Festival. 
Is that done now, is it? Yes, front hose. So. And you are off to Sunnier Climbs. Is Canada Sunnier Climbs? Yeah, I'm going over there on uh, September 21st, I believe. I had to change it because I got a I got a dose, so I couldn't have actually technically met it onto the plane. So uh, the dreaded, the big C. Mm, I don't even like talk about it because that's that's annoying stuff. Like, but um, thanks to everybody that's bought tickets, mm. and also I'm looking forward to going over. I really, really am, you know. And I think it's going to work out for the better, anyways, because it's almost like I got more, even more time to plan it. And yes. like now I can add in a couple of extra bits and um, yes. I must get that uh, stripper pole actually. A, f a polished performance. Yeah, I'm going to be like dancing on the pole for the first 25 minutes. I think I've worked up the cardio. Okay. <laughs> and then after that then I am going to be doing some wrestling. <laughs> and basically like I bring someone up from the crowd and I just wrestle them for like <laughs> 10 minutes. And I get the crowd, the front row has all like got bottles of uh, <laughs> different kind of like oils. I was like, guys, go for it, and then we just rest in. And the first ten minutes it is awkward, but then by the time <laughs> by the time the bed is stretched, is pushed out on stage, and the two of us are lying in a bed, it's, it actually gets very comfortable. And then, of course, the crowd. We kind of put a curtain between ourselves and the crowd, <laughs> and the person I'm in bed with. Then we just see see where that goes. Is it? I'm just thinking. Is it? Is the lottery system like? Is it like that? The person who gets put up on stage is like look under your seat sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do they have to pay a little bit more for that experience? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It's just, it's just, it's just luck of the there. draw. It's luck of the draw. It's just like wherever you're sitting, you know what? <laughs> just put the hand down. Yeah, it could. It, God it, knows it, what you find. It could be you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you know, you know, it, nobody decides they want to take up in the offer, so then you know. You, oh. You meet up with like some some people in chippers and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, back to Galway again and the <laughs> comedy festival. I once saw Father Damo from Father Ted, like in the chipper. Like, Joe Rooney. Yes, like half past five Joe in the Rooney, morning. Yeah. And I thought, thought, I don't believe it. And he was with Owen McLove. And I thought, I thought this is this is bizarre. Like, you, okay, uh, Owen McDonald. Mm, Owen McDonald. Huh? Yeah. So, but I'm like, oh my God. And they were, they were. There were yeah. there were silver foxes by then, but I thought this is surreal to me because I watched oh, yeah. Father Ted from like in my twenties back in the nineties in Australia. Oh well, okay, I shall. With Dougal or Ardo Handen recording it. <laughs> well, that could be a great. That that would go viral. I'd watch that. <laughs> I better head off anyway. All right. Well, thank you. On that note. On, the, on that note, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, Mr. thanks. Colgan. It's, it's been fabulous. A joyous reunion of sorts. Definitely, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, great chatting to you. Well, thank you for stopping by. And I'll uh, see you when you've got nothing on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.